Hello YouTube, I'm back here again with another Let's Learn Blender tutorial, once again mirroring what uh, Brandon is doing over in Freddy W2 with uh, 3ds Max. Um, today we're going to be talking about environment and spherical environments to better integrate objects into your scene. So let's hop on over to Blender. Alright, so over here in Blender, uh, this is where we left off last week. Um, we can hop into the render preview and we can see that we have uh, we have everything properly mapped and it's reflecting correctly in the cube or in the sphere but there's no reflections from the sky so that's what we're gonna have to add in so let's go uh, hop on over into the compositing um, workspace I have uh, the background image pulled up now uh, what we're gonna do is hit the red circle then the blue one for the world um, and what we're going to do is zoom out, find where uh, the background is. You might need to click Use Nodes, then uh, add in Texture, Environment Texture, and go ahead and open the spherical environment. Go ahead and plug that into the background. Um, now you can hop into Render Mode over here, and you can see that the spherical environment is in the right place. So what we're gonna have to do is um, add an input, texture coordinate, as well as a uh, texture, or sorry, vector um, mapping node. Uh, you can go ahead and connect them with generated to vector down here and vector to vector over in our environment texture. Uh, now we're gonna rotate it along the z-axis. I've found it's like about 125, negative 125. That kind of lines us up with the scene. And the other thing you're gonna notice here is that our background doesn't really match the same color as our sky. So that's the next step. Uh, we're gonna have to kind of color correct the spherical environment to match uh, what's in our background over here. So add a RGB curves node underneath color uh, and then we're gonna have to bring up the highlights by a lot and you can see our buildings are nice and or not are washed out so we're gonna have to bring down the, uh, bring down the darks. Not quite that much. About here, Might do it. All right, and now you can see that over here on our sphere. Sorry, zoom past it. On our sphere, uh, we have that really blue area. Now that's because over in our uh, environment uh, environment map there's this really blue um, sky that uh, was automatically exposed in uh, was it photosynth that uh, Brendan was using. Now you can get that out in an image editing software like GIMP or Photoshop. I'm gonna do it right here. Uh, but kind of taking down the saturation just enough to where it's a little bit less distracting. So color, hue, saturation. Um, Go ahead and slap that in there, and I don't know, maybe like 0.6, or, I don't know, I think 0.7 do do just fine, maybe a little bit more white. Now, what's happening here is, uh, the background is relighting the scene, and if you can see, compared to over here, the shadows, um, the drop shadows of our spheres aren't nearly as dark anymore. To get around that, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add in, or rather um, substitute, a darker version of this environment uh, to relight the scene and only use the one that we just set up for the reflections. And how we're going to do that is by duplicating this background node, and uh, as well as adding another uh, color RGB curves and a uh, shader mix node 
We're gonna go ahead and connect all these. Drag the uh, backgrounds into each one and then attach the uh, environment texture to the RGB curves. Not to the RGB curves factor, but to the RGB curves. There we go. The other thing we're gonna need to add is an input uh, light path node. And then we're gonna take the is glossy ray and plug that into the factor of our mix node and go ahead plug the output of the mix node into the surface of the world output. And so, uh, oh sorry, we're gonna have to swap, make sure the um, the RGB curves background, the, the one that we just added is on top and the one we made first is on the bottom socket of the mix shader. Now, as we drag down the intensity of the first one, it's still going to say the same in the um, it's still going to say the same in the reflections. So, um, what's going to happen is we're going to uh, keep an eye on the shadows and the foreground of our um, spheres and compare that to the uh, shadows of these cars. And then we're going to mix between this RGB curves here and the light over here um, in the sun panel, or sorry, light panel and the control panel, uh, between the strength and the RGB curves, how bright it is to try to match the, uh, how bright it is in the background. And, you know, it's... It's just about doing it for me here. Uh, we can render it out quickly. Um, and then we can take a look. Another thing to keep in mind is when you're rendering and you want to get rid of all this noise, uh, this light paths channel in the render um, drop down of the control panel is where you have to go. and. Uh, so first of all, there's the, no the amount of bounces, and that's simulating how many times a light path is bounced throughout the scene. And then the other thing is down underneath uh, sampling, and uh, the number of render samples. 10 is rather low for to get a smooth image. About 50 for a video would be uh, up there and getting a smooth image. Uh, right here, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the render because we have all we need right now. As you can see over on our red, green, and blue down that uh, bar across the bottom, we're about uh, 0.02 and over here we're about 0.02 in our shadows. Now uh, the render is, a ra is rather green but that can be fixed uh, with a curved node and compositing. Now that will do it for now. I'll see you next time uh, when we talk about compositing and uh, render passes, or what I assume we're going to talk about um, next week. If you'd like to subscribe, uh, check out the original one over on Freddy W2 and Brandon's Twitter. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Thank you.